All right, Cat Dad and NFT Machine finally doing this podcast. It's been almost a year now since we first decided to to ape into Mooncats, and uh, we we got to celebrate with each other. We got to commemorate some abysmal pain, and um, we got to grow and learn and kind of change both of our gr- our brands um, from that chaotic start. And I think this might be the first podcast that NFT Machine has ever been on. I was not able to find one out there. So um, we're, we're breaking a lot of firsts here. And uh, Machine, thanks for coming on. Yeah, you know, I had to come on for my friend. Uh, long time coming probably to do a podcast with you. It's, but uh, yeah, usually I think the only recordings of me are like Twitter spaces. So yeah, yeah glad to be on. Pod, podcasts are officially boomer media in the world of crypto as things <laughs> become, uh, become so accelerated. Yeah, my attention span is way too short for like regular podcasting. Like I'll do Twitter spaces and then you can just cut the Twitter space off at any time whenever it gets boring. So, yeah, well, here we are. We get a, an hour of your time. I know outside of your 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 Twitter account, the, the massive account that's grown and some of your um, what can be considered outlandish ideas that are actually pretty on point for for. Um, somebody who is uh, trading some some shit nfts if that's what we call them shit tokens or buying into blue chips you actually have a pretty cool past in terms of what you've dipped into in the crypto space as a ai artist and um, kind of those humbled beginnings into where what you've become now so i think that'll be probably the best place to start you have some yeah. cool ai artwork but let's go even back further. Um, you were an options trader before you came into the crypto world. Um, tell us a little bit about that experience, especially trading at such a young age in the uh, options market. Yeah, um, it's weird to think people are, would be interested in, in my past, but I'll go ahead and tell it anyway in case people are interested. Um, I stumbled on Wall Street Bets subreddit. I was a Redditor in high school. I was like one of those awkward kids who's just like on Reddit. And uh, I found Wall Street Bets. And this was before anyone even, this was like, Wall Street Bets was brand new, basically. It was like 2014. Um, And it was the first post that ever went viral from that subreddit. Some 16-year-old high schooler turned like... uh, I don't know, a couple hundred dollars into like $50,000, which at the time sounded insane. And um, sorry, I'm going to shut my door. There's sirens. Uh, you're all good. I'm, I remember coming up across Wall Street Bets. I think I think I was in college at the time. It was maybe six or seven years ago. It was before it was really anything. Yeah. And anyway, uh, I mean, now the stories you hear from there are like people are making like million dollar trades left and right. And it's like gone mainstream. But back then, like a couple hundred dollars into fifty thousand dollars from like a 16 year old in high school. That was like a crazy story. He did it in like it like four hours or something in like an options trade. And then that just got me down the rabbit hole of like learning what derivatives are and options. And um, I actually learned a lot from uh if anyone is actually interested in learning options i always recommend the sources where i learned everything uh it's from the founders of the brokerage platform thinkorswim uh it's like a big institutional platform they moved on from thinkorswim after they sold it and they created a platform uh called tasty trade uh t-a-s-t-y trade and it's basically just like uh what you would call like a think tank uh, uh, where like they just, um, come up with ideas for like outperforming the market and trading options. And uh, their, their strategy is mostly around selling options and collecting like the premium, uh, like making an income off of options. I, I, I always took the other side. I was like always an options buyer just because like the risk, like the payoff is bigger for options buyers. If you're correct on your predictions or whatever, um, but it helps to learn from the option sellers because those are the people that know what they're doing. Those are like the informed market participants. So anyway, yeah, I learned a lot of shit from that. Um, and during, while I was doing all that, like going diving into options and trying to outperform the market or whatever, uh, I got interested in like, um, I mean, you start to realize when you're trading that you're not actually trading against humans. It's, it's like 98% robots and machines. And you're like, well, sh- well shit, how, I want to do what those machines are doing. And then, and then you got to like try to learn like how the machines are beating it. So I started looking into like data science and machine learning because that's like 
that's what they're using is like neural networks and machine learning algorithms to like predict the market. It's basically like the same things Google uses to like predict what you're going to search or what YouTube uses to predict your next video. Like those are all the same machine learning al algorithms and they use them in financial markets to predict stock prices. So uh, I started learning about, uh, I spent like two years just reading white papers on neural networks and learning uh, like, I haven't I haven't used much of it since then. I, I want to go back and actually maybe do it, uh, like learn more about it and, and do something with it. But anyway, um, that's where I learned about neural networks and all that shit. And then eventually I got jaded with the whole thing. <laughs> I was like burnt out of financial markets and trading. It was like after two years of just uh, blowing up options accounts. Uh, so I just ended up using the neural networks to start making artwork because I saw Rarible uh, was like a platform that I saw. And there was like these artists that were coming on to Rarible in late 2020. And they were making like, at the time it was a lot of money. Now it's like nothing, but they were making like tens of thousands of dollars selling artwork on Rarible. And I was like, that's pretty interesting. Uh, I was like, I was into DeFi at the time, but DeFi, um, was too gig a brain for me. I wasn't smart enough for DeFi. So, and when you entered the the NFT space and started creating some of these um, AI machine learning um, token non fungible tokens, what type of software were you using to to create these? Uh, it's a Python script. Uh, it's called a style transfer neural network. Basically, you train the neural network on a data on like a source of data of one type of like image, so you can pick like Van Gogh paintings, for example. Yeah. Um, and then you train the neural network on that type of image so that it learns um, things. You pulled up the art, yeah. Uh, you, you train it on that type of image so it learns the style of that artist. And then you can project that artist's style on any image that you want. So like you can take a Picasso style and you can project it on like an image of a tree or w literally whatever you want to project it onto. Uh, and some of the images end up looking cooler than others. My, basically, the only thing, the, like the manual process behind it is that um, a, a lot of the outputs of the neural network are like complete garbage and they don't look good. So I have to, I have to like filter through like the outputs of this kind of looks good. This looks like garbage. And, and then once I find an output that like I, I like, or looks good, I go into, uh, it's called Lightroom, Adobe Lightroom. Uh, it's like a, a light, it's a an, a, an editing software for like the lighting. And I just, I just kind of touch up the lighting. This cra this crash bandicoot one is pretty sick. I have to say. Thank you, bro. I appreciate that. What, this Genesis collection, when was this yeah. launched? And um, was there any inspiration? Because there's obviously some some video game characters. There's a, a few um, hip hop artists and athletes. Kind of a, of a wide were, array. Some of these were actually commissioned, if I remember correctly. Like the DMX and the Nipsey Hustle were commissioned pieces uh, that someone paid for that uh, I did for them. And um, and then the video game characters were my own uh, choice. The just games that I played growing up that I enjoyed. Yeah, those draw a lot of inspiration. Then we have the the OGs. I remember this one. This is like a, a few months after. I think this was the collection that I put. This was the collection that I put the most amount of like time and effort into so far. I, I'm going to start. Uh, I don't know if I should drop this. Uh, yeah, I'll just say I'm going to start. I'm going to try to start dropping artwork on foundation uh, because I feel like that's a good platform for like curating the it, it, it's a good one for like building your brand. And I feel like uh, it's hard to get discovered on up. Like a lot of people don't even know I do art. They just think I'm like an NFT <laughs> DJ. So I think going on foundation where all the other artists are is probably a smart move. Yeah, uh, art is continually blowing up and now, now, Braindrops has kind of um, taken the reins a little bit with their their AI drops. Um, so yeah, the thing that's Justin. annoying. Uh, the thing that's annoying about all those AI platforms is they don't consider my art like actual AI. Why? What's uh, the What's the difference? Um, the when when they talk about generative art, I, I think it's bullshit personally. Because if you look look at the definition of generative art, it's literally just any artwork that's assisted with a computer, like anything where you're like assisted with 
algorithms is generative art. But uh, some people have the distinction of like generative art has to be like uh, like an, like a script that you're executing. Like there's no human input. And my process involves like a fair amount of human input. Like I'm choosing which images I want to use as the output. And then I'm like editing the lighting with like Photoshop to make it. So I guess you, I guess if you, if I didn't do any of editing with the lighting and I just left the output as it was and just ran a script, I guess that would be more, you could argue more uh, closer to what they view as generative art. But even that is probably not enough for, I I don't, I think um, those platforms like, um, like uh, what's the art blocks, the one that mm. uh, popped off hard last year. The thing about art blocks is that if I would, understand it correctly uh the nfts are minted at, like at the time of the script execution like so the coder can have no influence in the artwork beside more than what his script is like he can just run the script and then that's it because it meant the nft instantly and uh i don't think neural network artists work have the same workflow like they do a lot of you know yeah manual it- editing yeah, at least up into up until this point, there has to be some sort of uh, intervention from you, the creator, um, when it comes to the scripting, and that's where we see a lot yeah, of. Yeah, I, th- I, th- I think neural ne- I, not just me, but I think all neural network artists have been overlooked in the uh, generative art run and movement because they just don't have the same aesthetic that some of the. I'm trying to think of like collections that have popped off because I know there are other neural network art. I remember early on um, when I was like browsing twitter whenever i would find a neural network i'd be like oh shit <laughs> because like there's not a lot of it there's like maybe two or three uh and i don't think e- i don't think any of us ever really went viral to it, my knowledge and it's it seems like generative is this idea of generative art and the idea of being on chain is more of a spectrum than it is um, a binary one and zero approach as we've seen as kind of leading us to how we met with with Mooncats as they were discovered and they were the the first generative project at the time and now people don't call it generative and then you have to name it as procedural generative and but you have to understand the the limitations of the technology back in 2017. I'm pretty, I'm pretty sure if you just Google generative art, I've done it because it pissed me off. People just annoy me. I, I Google, I literally just Google and I went to the Wikipedia page. If you just read it, I'm not, I'm not even going to say it. <laughs> it's not, it's not even up for debate. It's a very clear dry and cut definition. It's like any, anything that's assisted with an algorithm or like an, an anything where like there's RNG or computation involved that a human isn't projecting themselves. And that's literally how the moon cats were like created with the hex code that I don't know. That's how I feel. And, and, I, I really don't care if the market appreciates it or not. I'm just like, I'm holding my back. Yeah, they'll, they'll appreciate it over, over time. I mean, we were both, we were like really the only two who were just kind of aping in all the way from the top, all the way down to the bottom with, with some strong conviction. Um, we had very, very different backgrounds as I had an antique store. I like the antique approach. Were you interested more in the, the vintage aspect or the generative aspect, which ties into um, your previous interest? I think what's fucked up is I had a thesis that was exactly uh, it ended up playing out with bored apes and not with moon cats, which is the fucked up. My my whole thesis was anti larva labs. That la- that was the thesis, and I was like, oh, this is another 2017 NFT project. It's not larva labs. It has a fixed supply cap. It's like pixel. And at the time, I was like, um, I was thinking of like, well, punks were the time were the big thing at the time. And they had the pixelated aesthetic behind the punks. So I guess in my head, I was like, well, they share the same 24 pixel format as the punks. And they're from the same year as the punks. I can't see why these wouldn't, you know, eventually be successful. Like, you you know what I mean? Because they have that same pixel aesthetic, same fixed supply. But what it ended up being more was like personalities and brands coming in and wanting like faces and images of apes and i didn't see that coming luckily i kind of uh corrected course and i started degening into profile pick projects uh after cool cats and pudgy penguins i started like buying more of them but uh i don't know i think personally i think the whole profiles like profile pick space is kind of crowded i think that trade is crowded I, it's only getting more crowded so i can't just keep saying it i'll yeah. just seem like an idiot but it does feel 
a bit excessive. Yeah, and that, this uh, is this is kind of what we've everyone's been yelling at the clouds for, saying that the the PFP thing is is overhyped, and how many PFPs can you have? My thesis on it was comparative to to mooncats, where mooncats are going to be this metaverse pet in the real world. Um, outside of biological limitations, we'd probably keep our pets forever, but they have a unfortunate expiration did date. You actually had, did you actually have a pet thesis when you originally went into it like nine months ago? Yeah. Or was that something that you formed after like Web3? No, I had it. It wasn't the first thesis. The first thesis was since I had an antique store. At the time, Mooncats were the second oldest NFT, and there was this gigantic I mean, gold that rush. Was all, that was also why, that was a big reason why I was investing was because like it, in my head, 2021 projects were just going to dilute themselves into eternity. Like they were just going to keep diluting themselves with, but I, somehow that didn't end up playing out at all. Um, but yeah. yeah, that was the, that was the thesis is that there's only so many 2017 NFTs that people can get greedy over. Yeah. Uh, and, and I was, I was rolling over all my profits from Dogecoin cause I was buying Dogecoin through 2019 and 2020. And so I'm the, one of the thesis was dogs equal fungible tokens and then cats equal cat NFTs. And it was the first cat NFT. So it was like this, this makes complete sense. Also, the pixelation um, standpoint. Yeah, the more I, the more we talk about it, the more I think it's fucked up that Mooncats aren't five ETH right now. Yeah. There's so <laughs> many reasons that they should be five ETH. I'm not even joking. It'll but, come. Uh, I think um, Mooncats in general, they face a few limitations. Um, one of them just a, a massive supply. I think the the um, unofficial wrapper definitely hindered the progress a little bit because of the confusion. The um, not straightforward rarity system um, confuses a lot of normies. Um, yeah, I feel like the only way people buy it is when FOMO kicks in and price is going up because it's too confusing for people to approach unless there's like FOMO. And then when people do jump into the market, they always make the most uninformed buys. They're like buying the worst, go like, <laughs> like things 300% above market. Uh, cause they just don't know how the market dynamics work. So, and yeah. what, and what, uh, yeah. And when you, when you look at the moon cats, um, price history, it kind of pumps like Dogecoin does too, where it's very slow. And then it has, there was like three or four separate 300, um, sale days and there's a thousand sale day too. So it has these like Pico runs where it just goes from zero to two or three hundred percent in a few days. I feel like that. I feel like that's any NFT that's not vi viral and uh, and when it pops off, uh, it pops off from like one like like a Gary V tweet or like um, Sotheby's news or like a Coinbase mm -hmm. NFT tweet, something like like just a one time news event and um, that. Yeah, that's like different than like a sustained rally, you know. That's more like a news driven. Mm -hmm. And like, and his historical NFTs kind of face this problem where some of the OG holders come in and then they just dump into the into the hype because they've been holding these tokens for that they got for free from years ago. And so Have you uh have you tried I I'm curious. Do you remember that guy who minted 100? He's one of the largest holders. He minted hundreds. Uh he was like the only wallet that minted them for years yeah for like the 2018 it's a roller consecutively he this madman spent years calling into the contract minting cats like he did it 2017 2018 20, or i'm pretty sure I'm, i don't think i'm making this up uh do you know how many cats he still holds i don't track um them. so he, at one point he had 1100 cats i think he's down to like 700 now or 800 Jesus. it's it's split up between a few wallets um some of them on open c and some of them still in the erc20 contract or token there's also a few people who have come back and started selling this most recent sell off. There was somebody who sold like 20, 2017 cats at one ETH a piece. They have, they rescued like a hundred 2017 ones. And I've seen, there's another person who has around 300 2017s. That's kind of dwindled that down as well. I feel like those are the wallets that you want to put resting bids in. That's for. yeah. I, if these, if these OG whales are smart, you're kind of forced to sell at a low supply or at a low price because you have to increase the the community and you have to increase the owner uh the unique owner ratio because it's just never going to pump outside of that and this is why i make fun of people or i, I dislike people who uh, make fun of pranksy for minting 1200 board apes um, and selling them pretty cheap but it's because if he held 1200 apes to now it would have never reached this price uh i don't know if it would have never reached but he wouldn't be able to get liquidity on it 
Um, like, like as soon as he sold anything, the market would crash. Mm-hmm. That, that's like, yeah, the it, it's not good market dynamics for anyone to have more than 10% of a supply of anything. So yeah, once you become a whale, then everyone starts tracking your wallet, which I know this is something that um, you were very familiar oh with. I'm, I'm up to 30 burner wallets. Really? It's not a joke. Not a joke. <laughs> Interesting. So I guess we could just talk about now your, your rise. When I first met you, you had like, I don't know, 5,000 followers or something. Now you're up to 35K. Um, you you made this shift. We were both Mooncat Maxis for a little while. And then you, you kind of threw the towel in and switched over to minting some PFPs. Were you more so just fed up with the um, the idiocy of the market, or was there some other well, I, I um, just, thesis like that you, you that played to, out? You just have to adapt. Like I couldn't just. I mean, it was clear what was happening. It was like uh, I remember because I got uh, lucky with Cool Cats, but I only bought like three of them, and they ended up going like a hundred x or something stupid. Uh, and I was like, okay. Next time I bet on a profile paper, it's going to be more than three because uh, I just was annoyed that I didn't have more of them. Uh, and then Pudgy Penguins was the next uh, project that I saw uh, Zinc tweeting about late at night. And I was like, oh, I want to buy some of these. And that time I learned from my mistake and I bought like 30 instead of like three. Uh, and I rode those all the way to like two or three ETH somehow sold the top i don't know if it's the top anymore what are they doing they've been going crazy yeah it's at like they're they're at like two eth now um after yeah. the the whole coal um fallout which i think that's a pretty interesting story um but now yeah, now that's pretty crazy yeah now there's a new meta game which we'll, we'll go into in a second but pre in this this last run up before they're like three month uh cool off it was all kind of like animal avatar pfps was there something specific that you were looking into when you're evaluating um, aping into some of these projects or were you just kind of doing the the VC approach of spraying and praying? Uh, no, I think it was pretty calculated actually. Like everything I bet on ended up hitting pretty hard early on at least. Uh, and I think it was because I was uh, paying attention to like a small like social group on Twitter. Like I, I found the people that I felt were like affluent and could like set trends early on. Uh, and whenever I saw them aping into things, I just aped in with them. And it's that simple, really. Uh, like, and to be honest, the alpha from penguins came from zinc.eth, mm-hmm. which everyone should go follow. Uh, and him and Elmo, I think were buying penguins. And I was like, all right, these are too fucking cute to be at 0.02 <laughs> ETH. So, so I bought like 30 and, and, uh, and that, and literally they went like, from that night they didn't they did not stop they went from that night from 0.02 all the way to three ETH and on the new york times two weeks later uh and my dad heard about them i called my dad and he was asking me about penguins so <laughs> it was kind of crazy because i was like one of the first people who bought them and i was like oh yeah I, I know about the penguins dad uh yeah yeah i remember farmer following you saying that in, the, in that last run up over over the summer that all the alpha was coming out at like 1 a.m. 2 a.m. Uh, Pacific time. Oh my God. Did you hear about my treasure mint? Yeah, uh, please. I, I read about it briefly, but please, please go on and explain it. I know you just remind me because it's my best 1 a.m. mint I've ever done. <laughs> and I'm ever probably going to do if at least if magic stays where it's at and keeps doing well. Um, I, dude, I'm, I, what's crazy is it's one of my best plays, and I and I fumbled the bag hard, like so hard. I I minted these NFTs, and I did not enter the Discord one time. I actually thought the project was dead, and I had them in my hidden folder until I started seeing it on Twitter, and I and then I went to my hidden folder, and I was like, oh my god. Uh, and um, anyway, I, I wasn't in the Discord at all, so I didn't I didn't stake my NFTs early on their platform. And if I would have done that, oh my God, I'm not even going to talk about it. At this point, it's probably like seven or eight figures because uh, people who staked in their platform early with the treasure, they got uh, like um, an inflation reward of magic tokens. And this was when magic was like two cents and now it's like $4. Mm. Uh, and they also got Genesis NFTs for like the Arbitrum 
Uh, it's all Arbitrum yeah. if you're familiar with like the scaling uh, solution and that they're all that um, you, I think they all also got small brains. I didn't get any of those. Um, uh, small brains are like the punks of the Arbitrum basically. System. Yeah. The, and, yeah, yeah. The, the, I was looking into the project recently. Um, it's pretty interesting because it's a marketplace, but it also has um, like game theoretic mechanics attached to it um, with staking yeah, and some I, other. I, uh, I own the, the, P, the, the text files, mm -hmm. the, like the, like the game items, like uh, gold, like, like gold tokens. And yeah, uh, it was like a loot, loot fork, wasn't it? Yeah, 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 yeah. So uh, it, it's ba it, basically my bags just sound like a whole bunch of RPG items. They're like it's like loot. Lo lo uh, I'm I don't know why I can't think of any of them, but yeah. There's loot. We have with loot prints with moon cats. There's bloot. There's um that was the the unfortunate. I'm surprised. I'm surprised at how well uh, the market has done for uh, the moon cat loot prints. I don't know who's buying them all. I guess someone's very bullish. Some on, of the community on, members. Yeah, we're supposed to. Uh, we're supposed to get some more information um, this month, and then they said with the marketing they can talk more about it in February. Um, a lot of people. When I was when I was minting them, I was like, "These are one hundred percent going to zero. I was like, <laughs> so annoyed. I was so annoyed that I had to pay gas for it because I was like, "These are definitely going to zero. I had no doubt. I had no doubt either. I was like, I I was doing it just because I didn't want to eventually if it if anything did happen. But I was like, almost I was writing it off as a loss. I'm like, uh. Why do I have to mint these? We were, we were we were talking about this privately before, but I kind of I kind of view loot prints and moon cats with as a, a combined um, price because once the game comes out, you're gonna need the loot prints to play the game. As long as it's um, some sort of yield generating game, which I feel, I we're all like hoping for. I, I, yeah, I feel like if I didn't mint them, I wouldn't feel that way. But because I did mint them, I'm like, yeah, I'll, I'll count them together. You know <laughs> what I mean? Because I have both of them, so I'm like, yeah, I'll count it. Yeah, they're they're. They're they're in a weird uh, they're between like a rock and a hard place. They they want to create a game. I know they've mentioned that they're going to do some sort of staking component. I like what Sappy Seals was doing, where they're doing a reward based off of um, the, the ra rarity. rarity staking, which is pretty cool. Yeah, and because yeah, you take super. the rares off the market, it makes it makes yeah, complete su sense. Super super dope. Uh, Sappy Seals are underrated. Or the developer is like the actually the whole community is underrated. Yes. Well, so, I mean, we'll see what happens with Mooncats, but um, we'll still be here holding the bag. I, I do think w when it comes to historic projects, and they're all down pretty bad right now, even even CryptoPunks are down pretty bad comparative to the top. I, I think it's so funny, as soon as Punks got flipped by apes, and they immediately started sounding just like the Mooncats crowd. Mm -hmm. they, like, there's no difference in how they sound. If you read the tweets and just replace Punks with Mooncats, <laughs> we are the same people. We're... They're like in our our shoes now, and it's the funniest thing to me. Like, yeah. yeah. It, when it comes to these these older projects, I think it's you just need time because you need to build the community. Um, also, some of these projects are bootstrapped with zero dollars, like with Ponderware and um, people, like the Curo Card artists and Pixel Maps uh, and all these. I do, I do I do think that there's a slight chance that there's like two different market regime like uh, market uh, I guess uh, like indices for NFTs. Uh, one would be like profile pick projects like, uh, and I don't count punk and, and I don't count punks in that group. That's not the group that I would put punks in. I count like board apes, pudgy penguins, winter bear, like all the new. Mm -hmm. profile pick 2021 and on that's like one specific sector of nfts like its own se sector and then there's like actually i guess there's kind of multiple sectors and then there's play to earn nfts which are doing their own thing and then there's like historic nfts which are like predate all of this stuff and that's like curio cards moon cats crypto punks um rare papes yeah you keep going back uh, back into it even the name coin stuff yeah. I think I think what's ultimately going to happen. I remember tweeting about this months ago that the the auction houses like Sotheby's and Christie's um, they haven't been doing that that well. Christie's has done pretty well. Sotheby's didn't meet expectations, unfortunately, um, but they will figure it out. I think they're going to end up auctioning off all of the the historic projects. It'll be primary historic project marketplace, and then um, all of the newer projects are just going to stay within Coinbase and OpenSea and whatever the competitors are because they could just flip it um, 
on this marketplace where some of the, the older pricier stuff can hopefully attract some of the traditional money once they finally capitulate and give in to it. Oh my goodness. I just looked at, I got to close everything. I'm sorry. I got distracted <laughs> with Twitter. Uh, no, I, I actually agree with you, but I, I do think that uh, the, the auction houses are also, in my opinion, just also going to jump on whatever trend the community sets. So I definitely think that like uh, doodles are going to get auctioned at Sotheby's, uh, even though they're a 2021 NFT, just because they just, they don't know what they need. They're taking their cues from us. We're setting the trends for them. So they, they don't know what the hell they should auction NFT wise. Like they're, they'll auction whatever's popping off. So I think doodles is, and, and um, I mean, cool cat has cool cats been auctioned. I don't think they have, uh, they had one at Sotheby's. I don't know if it's sold though or not. I don't believe that, that it did. The auction houses are just going to have to bring down the buyer's premium though. Cause that 25% buyer's premium is their 20% is not doing well. If you're not bringing the, the, they're, they're also the loyalist collectors. Any, yeah. They're, they're not doing anything to market the, like all the NFT sales are getting sold to NFT natives. Mm -hmm. So, so let's move on then. And let's talk about some of, some of your other bags and some of your conviction plays. One that you talk about a lot is, um, 24 PX, um, both the, the apes, what are they? We are apes. And then 24, 4px cats um tell tell us a little bit about the thesis i know you, you talk about them in short blips on twitter but now that we have some time um tell us the conviction behind i'm just it. i'm just bullish on cool cats i've always been bullish on cool cats i sold mine a little too early uh i sold it at the same time i sold pudgy penguins like two or three eth uh, and then it ran to like nine eth or wherever it's at but um I bought 24px originally at Mint when it was like just a 0.01 ETH. Uh, it's basically just a collection where an anonymous developer started uploading NFTs one by one on OpenSea, and whoever sniped the order, whoever sniped the listing first, got it basically. And um, early on, you could get them easily because there wasn't a lot of demand. They just sat there, so you could just come in and buy. But towards the end, at the end of the May, it got really FOMO, like FOMO started kicking in and you literally could not buy because as soon as they got listed, they were sniped. Um, but anyway, I bought some during Mint and then they went from 0 0.1 ETH. It was actually the stupidest thing. Uh, they ran all the way the wall street bets community came in and started pumping them Gainsy bought one if you know Gainsy, mm -hmm. and uh they ran all the way to half an eth uh and they got like uh it's one of the most traded uh like number of sales collections of all time and uh they got a and that was they were at half an eth when crypto or i'm sorry when cool cats the main collection they're based off of were trading at i think one point three ETH or like 1.5. So they were like a third of the value of cool cats or something stupid. It would be like if funks went to 20 ETH, like literally. Um, and the discord, of course, everyone was talking about how they were going to flip cool cats. And I was like, you people are fucking insane. So I sold a little bit at the top, but it, as soon as I started selling anything, I, it crashed the market. And uh, as after it went back down under 0.1, um, I looked at the ratio of 24 PX to cool cats, like the price ratio. And it was, is it one to a hundred? Yeah. It's like one to a hundred, right? And it's like the uh, cat punk ratio. <laughs> I, it might, it, I think it was even less, uh, when I started buying them, like one to 150 or something. And I mean, if you look at what funks did, uh, I feel like the, the, these collections, the, all they need is a little bit of momentum and FOMO to spark, and they immediately turn into blue chips. It's the like, it, like Funks are a blue chip now. Like if you look at the price, they're doing better than Mooncats and a lot of other communities. So uh, I, I think that'll happen with like a lot of these types of collections. It's because everyone just wants to mimic their the people that they admire on Twitter, like the people that make a lot of money. So that if your hero has like a, like a, what's a rare cool cat, like the astronaut helmet. Movie yeah. Or, or the whatever, TV one or the TV one uh, or something that you can't afford. 
but you could afford a 24 px tv cat it's that's just how it works like humans are do you think do you think the derivative market's here to stay or do you think it's going to fizzle out when there's a, a lengthy bear market if it ever happens i think derivatives are probably going to get wrecked the hardest in a bear market but i do think uh as long as the music's playing i mean as long as there's a music. chair to sit on yeah 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 it's fine for for now so I, i've been uh, surprised i got i was i was caught off guard uh with uh do you remember when i talked to early on about like a black a, a black line thesis uh like the the, 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 the thick off. lines right that was your turtle yeah, yeah. turtle tropical yeah, yeah, yeah. turtles what, what, what what's annoying is that it it was right like that thesis is playing out like if you look at alien friends and doodles and they're all base the whole reason i had that thesis was that the cool cats are uh the cool cats are like aesthetic style was very palatable and like easy to approach like it, it, it's just everyone likes that kind of art style that comic book and, and and thick line art style and the other reason it's good is because uh they make the for the best profile picks because for a profile pick you don't want a lot of details you want very low resolution features that you can identify from like far away with like a thumbnail uh because if it has too much detail in it you don't even know what you're looking at on on a profile pick and uh, that's why I like doodles and cool cats and all the simple, that's why I like 24. If you look at 24 PX, it is some of the best profile pick art that you can get because it, the, the, all of the features are so minimalistic and like simplistic that um, they're very easily identifiable in a profile, but even more so than the cool cats themselves, in my opinion. But the, the NFT space has really turned this idea of mimetic investing into a reality, right? Sitting here talking about the thickness of a line um, as an investment play seems ludicrous a few years ago. Uh, well, what's fucked up is it was such a smart and I didn't stick to my guns. I let the, it's a, you know how we got flushed out for a couple of weeks and there was like no buyers of NFTs. I let that like fade my conviction and like the thick line thesis in the black line. So I stopped investing in new projects with that, with that aesthetic style, even though I, 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 I looked at alien friends when it was like, or what, what are they called? The friends or alien I looked friends at them when they were like 0 0.04 ETH. And I was like, wow, that fits the style. I should buy some of those. But then I looked at all my other bags that I held of black lines that were going to zero. And I was like, oh, I don't need any more of this. It's annoying. <laughs> NFTs are tiring, bro. NFTs right now are heavily driven by influencers and simple tweets um, pumping markets. Do you believe that this will always stay the same? Or do you believe as, as newcomers come into the market, there will be different parameters um, in towards of the, the pumpamentals per se? Uh, I, I think it'll probably always be like mimetic desire. And uh, I mean, it'll be a long time before the markets are matured. Basically, these are like the new pump and dumps of mm -hmm. like the 2020s. Right, they're the they're, like, they're the uh, altcoins. They're, like, they're like influencer. Uh, yeah, it's all it's all driven off of Twitter. It is. You know, I'm looking at this mint that I. Oh my god, I hate NFTs. <laughs> I did a derivative mint last night and I five xed it, and I felt like a fucking genius. And it's literally done another three x. Is it is it kudos right? Yeah, I'm so annoyed right now. I'm looking at the sales feed and I'm like, oh, why did I sell? Uh, it's already like tripled since I sold this morning. That's insanity. So uh, according yeah. to, to Kobe's thesis of the metagame, as we were talking earlier in the conversation over the summer and kind of towards the end, it was all cartoon PFPs. Now it's kind of moved into this like combination PFP of just popular blue chip NFTs. Do you think this is like for sure the trend for this, this, this current hype cycle? Uh, I would not fade it. That's for sure. <laughs> I don't think, uh, you fade strength in a bull market. Uh, so you'll know when it's over, <laughs> it'll be very clear when it's over and no one's going to be questioning it. But, uh, for now, I think it's, you just play the game. Right. Right. So. right? It's, it seems like Bored Apes kind of... Oh, I think I think Bored Apes is going to be the driver of the profile pick market. Like if Bored Apes goes to 20 ETH, the whole thing is shot. 
in my opinion. Like and everyone, and like everyone's just chasing the next, the next board ape quote, quote unquote. And if board apes like shits the bed, then the whole market is going to go with it. So, um, it, yeah. if we are combining a lot of similarities from, um, it's weird to say the traditional crypto markets, but it holds called the, the, the fungible markets, right? Crypto punks would kind of be like the Bitcoin. Now it's been around for a while, moving slow, not much utility outside of just existing, um, and doing good at one thing. Uh, board apes are becoming this like name brand. You could kind of call them Ethereum, I guess, because when Ethereum pumps all of the, the altcoins, I, I, I hate that analogy, by the way. Yeah. I, I really have never I mean, seen how board it, I like, I, I think they're, they're, it's its own thing. I'm, I don't know. I'm, uh, the the compare yeah. the comparison is not from the technological layer because all board apes are really is just marketing. It's tokenized pop culture. Um, that's kind of why yeah, I haven't really that, bought that's into a it. Much be- that's a much better analogy. I like that way more than com- yeah. Tokenized I, pop culture. Actually, that's a really good. I, I like that. Yeah, that's exactly what it is. It's just a it's just a brand. I mean, they're building nightclubs and streetwear. I was just at a, the Las Vegas NFT meetup yesterday, and some guy paid a hundred hundred fifty bucks for the sweater. <laughs> Uh, I mean, like even the the uh, the Adidas drop where people are paying now one eighth for some track suits and some potential utility in the future kind of just shows into the pop culture hype beast. It, it really is supreme with it with like on Ethereum. It's like supreme on Ethereum. Yeah, it's kind of crazy. It's kind of crazy. But the the parallel to Ethereum is that whenever Ethereum pumps, the altcoins tend to pump, and with just like combining that to your thesis is like board apes are kind of driving this like shit coin oh, NFT yeah, yeah, market. Yeah. I, see, I see what you're I see what you're saying there. Yeah, yeah. But sure. in terms of a technology layer, I don't. I, I'm still pretty convinced that Mooncats are like one of the. It would be the Ethereum it has all the Giga brains. It just lacks the marketing, um, at least for now. I just, think, I just think comparing any of the NFTs to fungibles is is like a stretch in my. It's like, um, I don't know. It's hard. I, I feel like they uh, benefit from Ethereum going mainstream and like because you want to own assets on the chain that becomes like the dominant chain of the future. Like you, um, like if you own Solana NFTs, you're betting that Solana is going to be important, uh, in the future. And if you own ETH NFTs, you're betting that ETH is going to be important. So the, I, think, I think crypto punks and moon cats are good for that reason, because they're like some of the earliest, uh, memeable, like di- digital currencies on Ethereum that you can speculate on. So, and now we're eventually. Ne- I think Curio is going to get pumped, and um, they're all going to pump together. They, like, it's going to be a ro- it's going to be a rotation into like that whole sector. I, rem- I remember a DCL blogger posting something um, towards the end of of the summer where he was showing CryptoPunks, Mooncats, and Curio cards, and they all literally pump together. And so I think that's kind of what's happening now. Um, so I guess we just ride this um, doodle flipped. Uh, flipped fucking fast food punk. Bro, I, I'm about to max mint, so I'm looking at another doodle derivative that's in the middle of minting right now. And after watching what just happened with Koodles, I'm so pissed right now. I'm about to max mint, the, and I'm gonna get burned. Why? I'll watch. I'm gonna get burned on this one. This one's going to zero because oh, I'm max minting. Which I'm I'm releasing this in like three, two, three days. So you, you, which one is it? We'll see if your, we'll see if your thesis is actually right. Ah, <laughs> uh, shit. Okay. Uh, I don't know if I'm actually gonna because it's uh, right now it's there's like none men. It's out of one hundred out of eight thousand mentioned. It's called Crudles. C R O O D L E S. <laughs> it's the uh, it's the um, you know the creatures. Yeah. Uh, by yeah. by Dan. What's his name? I don't know. It's the creatures NFTs mixed with doodles and they look fire to be honest. So <laughs> I guess, might, I guess that, be- this completely makes sense because board apes kind of driven. Now doodles are on like have surpassed cool cats, at least in this hype cycle. So now you're seeing all the, the doodle derivatives, maybe the cool. God, cat. I can't believe I fumbled the bag on Koodles so hard, bro. <laughs> they're at 0.3. They're at 0.3 ETH right now. And I minted them last night for 0.03. Oh my Jesus. I, but, but I fucked up and I sold them at, so I mentioned them at 0.04 and I sold them at 0.15 ish, like around there. And I was like, yes, a three X I'm, I'm a genius. And now they just like ripped and they're going to fuck it. They're going to one ETH. I swear to God, it's going to happen. And I'm just going to be pissed. But hey, it's okay. You got to play by your thesis. So once you sell the bag, you got to turn it off and just never look I, back. I literally sent this. I literally sent this video. I said, it's time to close every, uh, open C tab for, uh, for Koodles and never look back. <laughs> <laughs> so, so 
outside of the the derivatives and the PFPs, are there any other growing trends within the NFT space that um, you find appealing? Growing trends with it. Oh, play to earn. Oh, I'm so excited for play to earn, dude. Launching this month. Um, oh, I don't know if I want to leak, but I'm. It's everyone okay. Who's on my, everyone who's on my Twitter knows what I'm acquiring. Like, <laughs> <laughs> it's obvious. I talked about it uh, a lot. Uh, so they should know what I'm buying. And you can just track, track my wallets. But uh, the reason I don't want to mention it is because I'm hoping fees dot what the fuck will drop me some money. <laughs> eventually so i can ape into this project more because i'm super bullish on it uh but i've literally just been acquiring it for a while i have a large uh exposure to it it's um the game that i would compare it to uh if you can pull it up i don't know if you can show the screen it's, it's called darkest dungeon uh on steam you can just search darkest dungeon uh on google uh, I'm sure some people watching this might have played it. I don't know, uh, it's a dungeon. D U D U N G E O. I'm a smooth yeah. brain. <laughs> You're good, bro. We're all smooth brains. Uh, here we go. Right here. Uh, you can just click on the artwork or whatever. But anyway, it's like a dungeon crawler, uh, turn based combat game. Uh, and it's got like this dope artwork. And, and it's like a just all turn-based combat uh, where you kind of have to like build your, your composition to like, it's like strategic uh, comps that you have to build to fight the enemy teams. And if you Google Paladin Pandas, uh, I'd leak the alpha fuck. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, there's an NFT project building something that's exactly like, uh, exactly like this. And I've been buying a fuck ton of, and uh, you've been tweeting about it, tweeting about them for a little while. What is appealing about play to earn? Is it the actual game and the entertainment value? Is it the fact that you could just make money? I know you've been highly critical of some of the P2Es where they're just more of a click farm than they are an actual game. Well, so far, I think the appeal has been the same appeal that DeFi Ponzi's have, uh, where I wish I could find you some of the gameplay that they have, but they have a demo out that I've been playing and it's fire uh anyway um i think a lot of the profile uh play to earns being shilled are like no different than like um DeFi ponzi's where like they rely on new money constantly coming in uh for that game for the quote unquote game to be fun because you're only going to come back if you're making money like let's face it you're not going to come back and play those games they're not actually entertaining there people are there to make money so i, I i'm interested in game and like things that i think people will actually have fun playing and then like uh, another one i'm interested in but have no exposure in because i don't want to buy the top uh is DeFi kingdom jewel uh it's like a, at a 10 billion dollar market cap or something uh so i just want to invest in projects like jewel where i think like people will actually have fun playing them and i i had fun playing the demo Oh, and they have a mobile app, an Android mobile app. And look at the price. N nothing. Oh, look, look, hold on, scroll down. All right, you see the genie sweep, zero A. Oh, uh, yeah, six. is this you? Go scroll down. Oh, my. Look how long it goes on. Dude, look this is like, Jesus. What is this, like 40? <laughs> uh, it's like 20, like 25 or something. Jeez. Yeah, I bought a lot. Do you, do you ever feel, I know... You, you've you recently, in a handful of these collections, you're acquiring about 5%. Do you ever have fears that it, you might have trouble liquidating everything at some point? I only get, I, don't, I don't go past 5%. And that's actually my, so there's a reason I do it. That's like the target. I just want to be one of the top holders of any, pro, any project I have a lot of conviction in that I talk about a lot on Twitter. I want to be a top holder for. And, so. and as a top holder in a majority of these these NFT collections outside of accruing, you know, financial capital from selling it, you actually acquire a ton of social capital, a uh, ton of social capital, tons. 
And, and with that power, you can kind of create your own brand and image and then eventually your own project. Um, are there any surprises to you over this last year of acquiring so much social capital um, and the community in terms of uh, the relationship to your community? Has it become a little bit distorted? Um, did Jake, if you pump this market after we get off this call, I'm going to be pissed, bro. I have to buy more. <laughs> Don't pump this. Do not pump this market, bro. Well, today's Friday. I'm releasing on Monday, so we got three days. So no, I meant you personally. Uh, <laughs> uh, I swear, I swear, I won't. I swear, I won't. I'm. With, no, I've been. I'm just messing. I'm, I'm messing around. I th I thought about it. I mean, I aped into some some 24 px. I saw they're going to be using the sappy seal stuff. Um, that was more of oh, a. But I, I I would definitely gift you one of these if you want to play with me and play the game and I'm, like uh show your podcast or whatever or do your Twitter. I'm I in. have a ton of. I'm in, I have a ton of them. I'm in, bro. I'm in, I'm in that social capital realm too, where now I was previously doing everything just Las Vegas, and now I'm completely just going into the crypto world. It's the easiest way, and I learned from the the Sotheby's auction. You know, it didn't go my way, but it landed me a ton of, of followers and a ton of relationships with people that I can now relate to and utilize. So that's I, I realize that NFTs scale social capital much more than anywhere else, whereas DeFi kind of scales intellectual capital. Yeah, I uh, was like, uh, I was in DeFi early and I heard about flash loans the day they came out. You know what flash loans are? Yes, yes, I am very Where familiar with Where people can like uh, borrow money, any amount of money for free instantly. And like, uh, anyway, I remember being so perplexed with the idea of flash loans because I was working in finance at the time. And like the whole idea was just absolutely crazy. Uh, but when I started looking into it, I was like, wow, I'm really not smart enough for this shit. And there was like, <laughs> there was like geniuses that were like working on it, figuring it out. And I was like, all right, I'll go do NFTs. <laughs> uh, it's, it's true. And then once we see this convergence of social capital, intellectual capital, I think that's kind of what oh my God, P2E that is. Bit on my Genesis cat is disgusting. Oh man. Are, why you, is it, are you just going to Are you just going to diamond hand this forever? I'm just going to dump it for 0 0.075 ETH and go <laughs> cry, go cry. You did actually buy the Genesis bottom. So like the literal I did bottom. Buy the, I bought the actual bottom. Yeah. That's about the only good thing I did with Mooncats was buy my Genesis at the actual bottom. And it's funny because I actually had a bid on this for 15 ETH and you ended up getting it for, I believe 12. You like underbid it. I got it, it for 14. You, wait, you had a bid on it for 15? Yeah, it might have expired by the time that you went into it. Because I remember the person, um, it was at 20, and then they lowered it to, to it was at 20, and then I offered 15. And it, I think it expired, then it went down to 15 or something like that. I had no idea that you were in the market at the time. For yeah, Genesis. and that's when I ended up buying, I, I was one or two buys after you, and I ended up buying number 90, which is the Darth Kitty one that I sold to, to um, Pentoshi for. Um, cause I was trying to get it bad. I knew these things would, would sell. I had a hard time selling it at the time, but I wanted to buy Mr. The, Moo. The, the gen, I do think that the Genesis is going to be the first one that I make my money back on everything. Like I, I, I do think, uh, I make all of the money that I spent on Mimcats and more back on like just my Genesis sale alone. Mm -hmm. I'm pretty sure. Yeah. It's crazy because they actually, would be, during the community boat, we, uh, vote we burned what 144 Genesis cats. Can you imagine if there's 144 more Genesis cats on the market right now? That would be terrible. <laughs> <laughs> that would be awful. Oh yeah. man! Remember how mad people were when they got burned? Yeah. Oh my god! As like because they... every literally everyone thought they were gonna get the Genesis cat. I was like, oh my god, you guys, you're not gonna get it. Just burn them. <laughs> Generative masks. Do you think these things ever come back, or are they is a game over? They got swept over the last few days by a uh, genie and it wasn't me i promise <laughs> uh yeah oh and miss cryptos they built uh dude it's crazy what some of these projects that go to zero end up delivering on there like miss crypto club went to it went to zero and there was like uh you could have bought them for like 0 0.00 or what and now they're back at 0 0.04 or something because they launched um sandbox uh you know the, the sandbox mm -hmm. uh they, they have 3D versions of all of their NFTs of all these misses, and they made like unique 3D voxels for all of them, and you can play with them. Jesus, man, you have so many of these. Holy shit. <laughs> yeah, I, meant, I, meant, I minted them. When you, when you go through these mintings, do you um, route it through the back end, through Etherscan? You do manual mints, or you just uh, sit there and ape on the UX? 
If the, the website lets me mint on the UX, I mint on the UX. If like during the loot derivative during the loot derivatives, you couldn't mint on the there was no UX to mint. You had to mint from the contract. So Jesus dot dots. Have you you still follow these? They uh those just came back too from zero. They 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 were I swear there were so many collections around December that people were tax loss harvesting for literally zero ETH. And now they're all back at like 0.1 ETH. I, I was talking, I talked about this on a Twitter spaces that I thought tax loss harvesting was a meme. As to me, it, tax loss harvesting is the dumbest thing I've ever heard because you're literally by definition selling the low. Like you, <laughs> oh, I don't understand. I don't understand it because <laughs> so many of those things that you're selling, uh, I mean, I guess there's two types of tax loss harvesting, right? There's tax loss harvesting where you're selling the asset and immediately buying it back. So that you have the exposure still, and you're just marking, you're just marking the loss. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. uh, and then there's tax loss harvesting where you just sell the bag at zero and you never buy it back. And I don't understand the la the later one, the second one. It's, it's for write offs, man. All right, here's your Cheshire Cat. What? Here, let's talk about the Cheshire Cat um, collection. Can you go to the pale? Can you go to the pale mag magenta floor and show people how thin it is? Yeah, it's crazy. I actually, crazy. this is how you know I'm a degen. Look at all these like moon cat, like, <laughs> <laughs> like I have everything just listed. Um, in oh, a wow, bunch of folders. Oh, you're way more organized than me. Yeah, I try. I try to be, man. It took me a while to kind of figure all this shit out, but you know, you know how I do mine. Mm -hmm. I have one single bookmark, and it has a filter for every care, every rare cat that I might want to buy, and I just refresh that one. And anytime there's a low cat, I buy it. Which one do we? Which one are we doing? Pale magenta. Uh, pale magenta. Right. I think. I think is. I think it's pale magenta. Yeah, you got. Close, close pale fuchsia tabby. Yeah. I want. I just want to see. I think these are the ones that are the thinnest. Yeah. Well, pale. Yeah, look at this. Look at this floor, dude. Holy Christ. This is actually a nice Cheshire right here, too. This, yeah, Pale Magenta uh, Tabby is the closest to a Cheshire that you'll get. Ooh, this I'm one's pretty, pretty that's, good. That's the way the market's pricing it, at least. If you look at all the others, they're lower priced than these. Um, yeah. Do you remember anyway, Do you remember all the wars that we've had in the Mooncat? Well, you're, you're not, you haven't been in it recently, but even when you were in it about people clearly defining character cats and um it's too uh subjective for some of those people some of the normies while, while everyone was, while everyone was busy arguing about what counts as a character cat i was busy buying everything that looked remotely close to a character cat yeah. i didn't really care about any cutoffs i was like that looks like a cheshire that looks like a cheshire uh and i ended up doing pretty good i think the only mistake that i made was i bought a couple of uh pit, what is it Pale blue, tabbies. pale blue, yeah. And those did not catch a Cheshire premium at all. Uh, they're like floor caps. Let's see where garfs are. Garfs are at one point seven. Dude, Cheshires are gonna flip garfs. Dude, remember uh, garfs at one point? For those who weren't here, garfs at one point were like three x the twenty seventeen floor. They were like first. They took off before even the the uh, the vintage narrative. That's the, why I tell people. That's why I tell people not to buy into premiums that like like you have to have conviction if you're buying into premiums because like i don't i don't want to fud anyone's bags but like people who bought the 2017 uh mint moon cats after gary v tweeted about 2017 mint moon cat, like there remember there was like a couple weeks where the only cats people wanted were 2017 mints yeah no one wanted a poor guy like it was all 20 and i'm pretty sure the premium on 2017 mints to the floor has come down like look uh, cheshire has actually flipped 2017s so like it's 1.48 <laughs> let's go that was let's my go. that was my big bag actually that was when we were both buying down in the summer i was going all for 2017 although for the first few months we couldn't really figure out what a 2017 was because there was no <laughs> there was no rating did, system did you did you off did you offload into that rally or do you still yeah. have a big bag of 17s. Um, I have a limit here. Let's go to my bag real quick. Um, I offloaded. I, I offloaded. I offloaded like all of my early 2017 cats except for my Genesis and my Pink Panther. Yeah, I still have a decent bag, but I've definitely offloaded. I'm down to I think 78 cats. I was at 130 at one point. 
Um, I've actually been kind of rearing up. I've been buying. Uh, that's what. That's the move, dude. Rearing up is the move. I swear to God. That's I've been. The move. I've been buying a lot of uh, character 2017 character name cats. There's like two or three of each one. Um, Wait, you got a Garfield 2017 for 1.5 ETH? Yeah, this is. <laughs> that's fucked up. And it's named too. So I've been going into the name Wait, thesis. Look when at. When did you buy? When did you buy that? How did I miss that? This one. Look huh. at. This is my. Look at the Cheshire. It's pretty good too. Number 1087. Oh damn! Um, damn. This one I bought. When did you? When did you buy that? Six it months ago. Months yeah, ago. July. Oh okay. July. Yeah. I thought you sniped that recently. I was no, like, God, a lot of damn. I I haven't had a Mooncat buy in a while. I've just been rearing up. I have some Garf. See, look at this one. I bought Pink Panther for, off of uh, I bought this off of Vidpet. He wasn't gonna sell it to me for anything lower. So, um, dude, Vidpet tries to lowball me on everything. So <laughs> uh, and, then, and then he has the audacity to DM me and tell me to stop undercutting the floor. Uh, <laughs> uh, did he message you that? <laughs> Yeah, he's like, bro, don't you think we should get some momentum and stop? And I was like, oh my God, just stop. Oh, man, so I have probably about 15, 2017s left. Um, but like I said, I was rearing up on a lot of them. Um, and then I have down here, I have this. This is the kind of, it's close to a Cheshire. I've yeah, missed, no, that's a, that's a Cheshire. Yeah, so that's my 2017. And then uh, I have this number 588 zombie named. So all I need now is a 2017 alien named, which somebody's probably going to snipe me after I'm talking about this. But there's only <laughs> lit, there's only three of them that exist, and two of them are still in the ERC-20 uh, format and have never been moved. So Oh, shit. It's like, I, if besides that, I'd have all five named 2017 ones. So um, that's, that's dope, dude. Yeah, that's I need a... To, uh, yeah, I, I went heavy on Cheshire. That was my main bet. I have like such a big bag. And this is this is what I traded. Uh, I sold Pentoshi. Uh, or not, yeah, I sold Pentoshi my um, my Genesis for seventy ETH, and then I ended up buying Mister Moo, which is number six, first named cat. This is actually like the first named NFT ever to exist, um, at least on Ethereum. Yeah, I saw. I I, I, I do think that eventually that catches a narrative. I, I yeah. think you might have to hold it for a while that before was, people. Yeah, that was yeah. my plan. Well, to me, I thought named cats are easy. If I ever make like a Moon Cat movie, named cats and character cats are going to be the two easily identifiable things once you start bringing these to life, because that's kind of like one of the narratives that you see happening. Yeah. Um, but like I said, these are, these are a long, uh, a long hold. I, I think the cool, th I think the cool thing about having, uh, like, uh, being kind of an influencer and when you're NFT shopping is you can choose like, like, for example, I chose Cheshire's and that's my bag. And whenever moon cats start to pump, I can just tweet about Cheshire's mm -hmm. and how, and how I love Cheshire's and mm -hmm. it helps me. So <laughs> here it yeah. is. Well, your account now, 33,000. Uh, before we get out of here, just want to talk about your account, large account, um, comes with a decent amount of responsibility and you probably get just like a, an enormous amount of DMs and messages. Uh -huh. Dude, I'm so sad. I missed uh, a play to earn that uh, Snoop Dogg, quote unquote Snoop Dogg. He's not actually mm -hmm. Snoop Dogg. Everyone knows. I think it's his but team. Funny. Dude, I, I hate when this happens. So uh, this happened to me with Board Apes. Did you know I was one of Board Ape Yacht Club's first follows on Twitter? And I really? did not follow them. And I didn't follow them back. I did not even follow them back until the floor was like five ETH. And I missed everything. And I was like, are you fucking kidding me? Why did I just not follow these people? Uh, and then it happened again with this play to earn that I don't even want to talk about that. Uh Cosimo or whatever, yeah. uh, tweeted about, and now it's at like a one and a half ETH floor. And I, and I went to their page and they were following me. So I checked the DMS. Like I checked to see if they had a message issue. and they had like four messages from six months ago when they were just launching, asking me for help, uh, like building their, and I was like, there's so many like really good opportunities afforded to me in my DMS that I just completely miss because I get bombarded with garbage that I don't want to look at. And like, scams and so what you know. what would be what would you recommend is the best way to get in contact with you if there's somebody who's listening to this if they have a project or their investor have a good opportunity just comment on my twitter posts turn notifications on for me and comment on my i, I i'm always on twitter and uh i see even if i don't reply i'm i i see it i promise mm -hmm. uh 
Yeah, so. that's this, that's a strategy that I do is I usually DM somebody and then I'll respond and say something, something, check your DMs. It's important. I just can't do that. I just can't do Yeah, yeah, yeah. That work that works. Uh I don't I don't normally like check your DMs with no explanation from mm-hmm. strangers unless it's someone I know. If you just reply to one of my posts, check DM. I'm not gonna check your DMs. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> but like let me know what you're trying to get my attention about and I'll check DMs. Unless you're my friend, and then I'll check. Hey, okay. well. Machine, thank you for uh, for coming on. Um, I'm so glad we finally got to do this. It'd been a long ass time, and um, now we're here. Uh, we're in the the beginning of this bull run, maybe the last of this I, crypto market before the pico top actually happens. It might be fucked up, but I still have conviction in my in our mooncats. Oh, me too, man. Me too. I like I said, the narrative right now is as like we said with Kobe's metagame thesis. Right now, it's all profile pictures and pumps and derivatives of the the doodle ape cool cat fast food whatever babies I have to go cope I have to go fucking cope about koodles dude I'm looking at the sales it's not stop it's not stopping there's like 30 sales a minute so I'm gonna go cope I'm gonna go you know make a drink or something oh man well appreciate you and um We'll see what people respond to this. And uh, one day our moon cats will pump and we'll stop being the old people yelling at the clouds. <laughs> so yeah, yeah, yeah. until for then, sure. thanks brother. And uh, I'll see you in the Twitter verse. Thanks for having me on, bro. I appreciate it.